peace where once there threatened war. In 1963, he visited many lands. The book of his travels opened at the end of September when he left his native Africa and the oldest of its lands to fly to the new world, to the United States of America. Washington awaited his coming. The land of Lincoln and all the power which it contains was his to command. Ever since the days of his dignified resistance to the fascist powers, his name has been a legend. And now preparations were made to honor him. President and Mrs. Kennedy were at the station as the train arrived. The young president greeted him. The man who, in his early 40s, had been called to lead the most powerful nation on earth, paid tribute to the emperor who had set an example to the world by his courage in the face of adversity and his single-minded determination to rebuild his land and set it on the road to progress once more. wanted to greet the emperor and on behalf of the people the president welcomed him with these words ladies and gentlemen i know i speak in behalf of all of my fellow americans in welcoming his imperial majesty back to the united states in welcoming his majesty we honor not only a distinguished leader of his country and a distinguished world figure but we also welcome a man whose place in history is already assured. His memorable and distinctive appearance before the League of Nations in the mid-30s, which so stirred the conscience of the world, that appearance was supported prior to that by action and has been supported in its high hopes by the consistent support which His Imperial Majesty has given to those efforts since the end of the Second War to associate three nations together in common enterprises. The support uh, to the effort in Korea, the support of the most recent effort in the Congo, the strong support he has given to the United Nations, and perhaps uh, most celebrated of all, his leadership in building a community of free and independent states in Africa. Since his Majesty visited the United States nearly a decade ago, we have seen uh, one of the most extraordinary revolutions in history. And that has been the appearance on the world scene of 29 independent countries in the short space of less than 10 years, including over 150 million people. The conference recently held in His Majesty's capital served, I think, uh, to bring together in a great uh, cooperative movement, the people of most of these countries. And the success of that conference was due in no small part to the leadership of our distinguished guests. Therefore, for what he has done in his own country, his efforts to move his country forward and provide a better life for its people, and his efforts uh, throughout the world, which stretch back uh, over 30 or 40 years, for all of this, uh, Your Majesty, we take the greatest pride in welcoming you here, you do us honor, and I can assure you that there is no guest that we will receive in this country that will give a, a greater sense of lively pride and satisfaction to the American people than your presence here today. Your Majesty, you're most welcome. The Emperor replied. Mr. President. Mr. President. We are touched by your speech. Since we last visited the United States, there have been a large number of changes. America is a country of many different peoples from all parts of the world who have settled here. 
and one would not be mistaken if I called it a second home for all people. And then there was a state drive through the streets of Washington to the president's guest house. The people of the New World delighted to honor the ruler of one of the oldest lands in history, and nearly 200,000 people watched the procession. Just before lunch, His Imperial Majesty went aboard the Sesquoia for a journey down the Potomac River. He was accompanied by Attorney General Robert Kennedy and the Chief Justice of the United States, Earl Warren. At the White House, he talked with President Kennedy. Nobody could have believed then that this man, called to lead his nation in troublous times, would in a few short weeks be dead. Already Kennedy, young in years yet old in wisdom, had made his impact on world affairs. His love of peace was the emperor's own, yet death was to claim him before his work was done. That evening, His Imperial Majesty returned to the White House, there to attend a state banquet given in his honor. Was the president, and it was an occasion of pageantry and splendor. 